As the old adage goes, never judge a book by its cover. Something easier said than done in the 80s and 90s, what with the lack of internet resources and late and usually overly positive magazine coverage. Those first impressions we received from the glorious artwork of Dawning a game were all we had to gauge whether we are about to be treated to a world of delight or be destitute to a wasteland of disappointment. It was pretty much Russian roulette. But while our young minds were distracted by what wonders the game itself could bestow us behind that plastic or cardboard sleeve, no one really took a long hard look at the actual cover artwork itself. Was the master craftsman who created such a bedazzling spectacle truly a modern Michelangelo? A recent Raphael? Or something far less honourable? What I'm really guessing at here is publishers had to make their games look as enticing as possible to prize young Johnny from his hard-earned allowance. Unfortunately, due to a lack of budget or an over-encroaching deadline, this would occasionally mean cutting corners, such as hiring not-so-talented artists, which in turn led to terrible box art, such as the infamous American cover to the first Mega Man, the poorly positioned couldn't be asked to draw the rest of it leg from Black Belt on the Sega Master System, and of course, who could forget the terrible cover art to the much loved and critically acclaimed train simulator Anglo Scott for the ZX Spectrum. <laughs> But cutting corners could also lead to a far darker path in video gaming. Plagiarism. Which by total coincidence leads us to today's feature. Hi, I'm Guru Larry, and I'll welcome you to the fascinating world of box art ripoffs. Sometimes it can be shitty when there's a game you really want. You wait a really long time, it takes a bloody years to come. What about those games that you just don't get to play? They were not released in the US, but places like the UK. Does this have to do with this song? It's games that can't come when. Though they actually can in this particular episode. The most famous example of a box art ripoff has to be Bob Wakeling's seminal work for Contra, quite possibly one of the most iconic covers for the NES. The piece in itself is actually lifted from Ocean's home computer port of Grizor, the single player version of Contra, released the year before. But look closely at the ailing in the center. That's right, it's a xenomorph, one of HR Geiger's creations. But Bill on the left here, as you can see, is almost an exact copy of this press shot of Arnold Schwarzenegger from Predator. And Lance on the right here, which people think is an image of Sly Stallone. Sorry. It's Arnie from Predator again. Though in all fairness, Konami liked this pose so much, they copied it themselves for one of the cutscenes in Contra 3 for the Super Nintendo. Then trace the movie poster from Raw Deal for the Japanese version's box art. But as for Bob, I'm sure this blatant copying debacle was totally an isolated incident, and that Mr. Wakelin never stooped to tracing ever again apart from Target Renegade and Cosmic Wartoad and Athena, which he then rips himself off with, with the cover to the Legend of Kage. Moving on. But it wasn't just the appeal of 80s action heroes that lured in a torment of plagiarism. Many fantasy artists also had their work unceremoniously ripped off as well, and none more than the late great Frank Fazetta with his piece The Norseman, or the one with the bloke's arse in it, as it's more commonly known. Frank was famous for his Conan the Barbarian illustrations, so it comes to no surprise that most of the rip-offs came from games that essentially ripped off Conan themselves. For instance, the arcade poster for Restan Saga 2. Falcom's Dragon Slayer. US Gold's port of Capcom's arcade game Black Tiger. 
to a lesser extent, Tater again for the arcade poster of Gadash. And most surprisingly, the much-loved cover of the original Castlevania. But that wasn't the last of Castlevania's copying. Its sequel, Simon's Quest, had the audacity of literally copying and pasting the entire image of Dracula in the background, from Clyde Caldwell's cover art to Ravenloft, an expansion book for advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Oh sorry, they redrew his head. That must make it okay then. Konami Europe must have twigged onto this, as by the time the PAL version was eventually released, the image was altered to be just Simon in front of a bland blue background. But the original Famicom Disk version is even more revealing. And before you ask, yep, even Castlevania 3 got into the act too, ripping off another of Clyde Caldwell's illustrations. Admittedly, it's not as close as the previous efforts, but you can see the inspiration. But as for Mr. Frazetta, his artwork will be plagiarised by a number of other video games throughout the 80s and 90s, most notably the box art to Gauntlet, the Turbo Graphics cover to East 3, and even the great artist Simon Bisley taking <coughs> inspiration with the cover to Weapon Lord. Except for the PAL versions. <laughs> Which is a bit crap. But then there's a curious case of the artist who got so lazy at tracing artwork, he gave up plagiarising and started copying his own work ad nauseum, as evidence of the first two Streets of Rage games and Final Fight 2. For starters, look at Blaze, who is wearing white for some reason, on the Streets of Rage 1 cover here. Then look at Maki on the Final Fight 2 cover. Aside from the artist getting the colours completely wrong, they're exactly the same pose, just mirrored. This pose actually comes from the movie poster of the 1974 Sonny Chiba movie, Sister Street Fighter. The artist must have loved this poster, as he then copies a pose of Sonny Chiba himself, with Carlos on the cover, complete with freshly punched flying goon. But he does seem to be quite the fan of obscure kung fu movies in general, as going back to the Streets of Rage cover again, Axel's pose here is actually from the post of the 1985 flick, Jim Carter. And this ninja's position looks quite similar to this oozy wielding thug currently having Nike sponsored dental surgery. So where does this accusation of him copying his own work come from, Larry? I hear you ask. Well over to the Streets of Rage 2 cover, check out this knife wielding thug here who looks like he's just slipped with some dog mess. His stunt work must have impressed Capcom USA so much that he's back again in the exact same pose on the Final Fight 2 cover. He couldn't even be asked to change clothes. He wasn't the only one to take advantage of Capcom's recruitment drive either. Matey in the window here on the Streets of Rage 1 cover is back in the exact same pose on the Final Fight 2 box. He's even strangling the same woman. What a hero. But most curious of all, is this copyright infringing Toxic Avenger down here peeking out of the sewer, who was looking in completely opposite direction on the battle in both the Streets of Rage 1 and Final Fight 2 covers. Still, it's nice to see Toxie photobombing early 90s fighting games artwork, isn't it? So in conclusion, across three game covers, the artist managed to trace five images from movie posters and recycle his own artwork thrice. That's pretty lazy by anyone's standards. What's all that about? Sadly, that's all we've got time for for today's episode. But what you've seen is only just the absolute tip of the iceberg when it comes to box art plagiarism. Hell, I could do an entire episode alone on all the celebrity likenesses they've ripped off. Now there's an idea. Haven't you heard this song before? Jesus is hard to be original with only 12 notes in all the world. Haven't you seen it all before? All of the films and books and TV, everyone sounds like someone else. And I else. don't know why. Haven't you heard?
that's new. I've heard that before. <laughs>